It's the Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. Mexico's presidential campaign officially began two weeks ago on March 30th. So far, all polls indicate that the leftist candidate, Andres Manuel López Obrador, commonly known as, by his initials AMLO, is the front runner. And an April 15th poll gives AMLO 42% of the vote. His nearest rival, the centrist Jose Antonio Meade and the conservative Ricardo Anaya, each have about 20 to 23% of the vote. The presidential election is scheduled for July 1st. Joining me now to give us an update on Mexico's presidential election is John Ackerman. John is professor at National Autonomous University of Mexico, UNAM, and he is editor-in-chief of the Mexican Law Review and a columnist for both La Jornada newspaper and Proceso magazine. Good to have you with us, John. Wonderful as always, Charmini. Um, uh, uh, big hellos down from, from Mexico City up to Baltimore. <laughs> Uh, thanks, John. All right, John, let's get uh, started with uh, Abador. He is soaring uh, in the polls. Uh, many polls are indicating that, so I think we can rest comfortably uh, that mm -hmm. they are reliable. What is it that he's running on? What's on his campaign agenda that is garnering all of this support for him? Well, yeah, indeed, the, the polls are, are really shooting up for him. People were wondering what was going to happen once the campaign started. This card, as you mentioned, just two weeks ago, he had been ahead beforehand. But, you know, the big question was with the beginning of the, of, the, of the campaigns, would things even out or would he somehow, you know, break through what had seemed to be uh, the, the, the upper limit of his support, which had gotten around, you know, 30, 35 percent. Um, but these last polls, the most recent polls, particularly the reformer poll from, from today, are um, demonstrating that the campaigns are helping him instead of helping his rivals. So he's now, uh, you know, 20 percent ahead in the polls. This, of course, does not mean that he's won the election because uh, things are going to be complicated for the next few months. And there's also uh, the very important concern of uh, electoral fraud in Mexico, which is uh, a frequent occurrence, unfortunately. Um, so his proposals, what are his platform? He's talking about corruption. Uh, that's probably the number one issue on his uh, on the uh, on his campaign, talking about you know fixing Mexican institutions, combating corruption, uh, ending uh, these uh, you know, this failed democratic transition, trying to move towards a, a real transition in which government is accountable to its people. Uh, a second uh, big point is the relationship with the United States, of course. Um, Lopez Obrador is not a you know a fiery firebrand, uh, a populist nationalist as they're trying to call him, but he is. Uh, very much concerned about you know defending Mexican sovereignty, defending Mexican and Latin American migrants in the United States, and uh, you know the, having a, a a more equal relationship with Trump because uh, Peña Nieto and his foreign minister Videgaray have really just sort of been servile clients of the Trump administration, and that's been terrible for Mexico, for Mexicans in the United States, and I would say for the United States people as well. Uh, and the third big point would be you know inequality and poverty. Lopez Obrador has been a big champion of the uh, the cause of the poor of social justice uh, he's you know not a radical economically you know, his he cites you know Franklin Roosevelt all the time talks about Bernie Sanders uh, I would say that the, the closest uh, uh, comparison for him in Latin America would be Jose Mujica in Uruguay that would be the probably the most similar leader in Latin America um, to what he's proposing he's uh, talking he does, for instance he's not saying that he wants to even raise taxes much less um, expropriate. Uh, he wants to redistribute based on saving money through combating corruption, even lowering government salaries and ending uh, fiscal paradises. That's another big uh, way in which he's talking about bringing uh, money in uh, in order to go towards infrastructure projects, scholarships for youth, um, building schools, hospitals. That, that's his big project. Uh, John, let's take up Lopez Abador's specific approach and attitude towards the United States and how that is being received by the electorate. So Lopez Obrador is by no means anti-American. He's been very clear about this in his tour last year to the United States uh, to express his solidarity with the, the Mexicans after Trump's uh, inauguration. He gave talks in Los Angeles, San Francisco, New York, Washington, Chicago, and was very clear that what he wants is a good relationship with the United States, specifically with the uh, United States people, even Trump's bases. He says that they've been fooled by Trump himself and that, you know, the, 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 the humble working people of uh, the United States and Mexico and all the Americas should work together for 
um, social justice. So he's not been trying to pick a fight with Trump, but he has been much more dignified and um, defending Mexican sovereignty with respect to Trump when you compare this to uh, Peña Nieto, of course. Uh, he, you know, a few, last year, last March 2017, went to Washington and presented a case in the American, Inter-American Commission of Human Rights against um, Trump's executive orders of January 25th of 2017, uh, which basically called for mass expulsion of Mexican and other migrants from the United States. Uh, he has requested the United Nations to intervene in the dispute between Mexico and the United States, specifically around the issue of the border wall. And so, yeah, he's going to stand up for Mexican rights. But once again, he's not looking to pick a fight from Trump or with the United States at all. He's trying to look for good relationship. He has not come out against NAFTA, for instance. He's come out in favor of, you know, updating NAFTA with more uh, uh, labor protections, environmental protections. He's even publicly, you know, taken Trump's uh, offer of, you know, equaling this minimum wage in North America as part of, of NAFTA. You know, Trump has said that you know, he doesn't want to do NAFTA because this would bring down salaries in the United States, that he would only do it if, there was, if we equaled the minimum wage in the United States and Mexico. And so Trump's, so Lopez Obrador said, hey, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. So, you know, he's playing this strategically. He's not looking to separate Mexico from the United States. He's looking to construct a more just and fair North America. John, let's turn to the other candidates who are running. The two other main candidates are Anaya and Meade. Now, I understand a new candidate has been introduced, Bronco. Uh, his uh, real name is Jaime Rodriguez Calderon. Uh, give us a sense of how they are doing and, of course, uh, who is a serious opposition candidate here. Well, well, the serious opposition candidate is Lopez Obrador. That's the, the interesting thing. He's, he's way ahead in the polls, but he is the opposition. That's what defines him and distinguishes him from the other candidates. The other candidates are all very close to the, the ruling system, all four of them. Uh, Jose Antonio Meade is the candidate of the PRI, which is the officially the ruling party, Peña Nieto's party. He's way down in the polls, you know, 15, 16 percent, because uh, when you ask people whether they're in agreement with the Peña Nieto administration, you know, only about 15 percent or 20 maximum uh, uh, approve of Peña Nieto's administration. And the PRI has really become uh, 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 the most reputed party in, in, in the country. Uh, the other candidate who has some support in the country is Ricardo Anaya. He's cobbled together a uh, a rainbow coalition of the, the the pan which is the right wing party the right christian democrats the prd which is the old what used to be the left party but today has you know basically been replaced by morena which is lopez Obrador's party but the remnants of the prd has come over and is now supporting the right wing candidate uh, uh, ricardo anaya who comes from the pan very interesting and then there's a, a smaller party called citizens movement which is also supporting this this coalition but it's it's a uh, it's really a, a, a mix of so many different orientations, um, both right and left. Which you know, it could that could create an interesting rainbow coalition, but it's been more contradictory than uh, than than anything else. And this has created confusion. And he hasn't, Anaya hasn't really taken off either. Has he's, hasn't been able to really set the agenda. Uh, he's also been accused of, of serious corruption uh, um, issues in terms of money laundering, et cetera, which we would go into more detail if you wanted to. And the other two candidates are uh, the so-called independent candidates. They're independent because they are not being uh, proposed by a, a political party, uh, but they actually are very much linked to these same parties, the free and the pan. Uh, Margarita Zavala is an independent candidate. This is the wife of uh, Felipe Calderon, Mexico's ex-president from 2006 to 2012. The president who really, you know, brought the bloodbath to Mexico, started this violent, militarized war on drugs, which has uh, continues to this day, uh, really rip apart the social fabric of, of Mexico. And the other independent candidate is Jaime Rodriguez Calderon. He has just been mandated, sent onto the ballot by the electoral tribunal in a decision which is, uh, you know, it, it totally has no uh, juridical or legal substance. It was a political decision by these uh, federal magistrates are probably responding to some sort of external pressure uh, because he's uh, ever since he's been put on the ballot last week on um, every single one of his press conferences he has attacked frontally Lopez Obrador so it looks like his role is not going to actually be com to compete for the presidency but to be on the ballot in the debates to be sort of the the attack dog uh, anti Lopez Obrador attack dog to try to get um, him down in the polls 
All right, John, one last question. Reuters just reported on Wednesday that at least 82 political candidates for local office have been killed since the campaign season began last September. Now, according to the reports, most of these killings are probably linked to drug cartels. Uh, what's your take on all of this? Yeah, well, this is a very sad situation. This is a, a, just an expression of, in general, the collapse of institutions and of uh, of law enforcement throughout the country. It's interesting that uh, almost all of these uh, politicians who have been killed are, are at the local level. They're running running for or want to run for uh, municipal offices. Uh, that's that's the really important level of control that the narcos want to have over you know local police officials, uh, local. Uh, you know, tax collectors or anyone who's doing any kind of supervision at the local level so that they can have, you know, freedom of of movement. And if you don't, you know, cut deals with these guys, then, you know, you the the the, the bullet or silver or the bullet, you know, plato plomo is the expression in Mexico. If you don't accept the bribe, um, then you'll either be pressured or if you don't accept that either, then you'll be you'll be killed. And so this is uh, just a demonstration of, of institutional collapse in the entire country. Uh, and the real need to, uh, you know, whoever wins on July 1st to take that on as the number one uh, issue in the, the future of Mexico, uh, trying to combat impunity, um, trying to put Mexican institutions back on their feet. Uh, and we hope that this, this violence doesn't have uh, too much of an effect on the elections themselves in terms of, you know, the election day, uh, you know, if, if, if the violent elements, who are not independent of politics, by the way, these aren't just narcos, most narcos are protected by uh, the ruling class, the ruling uh, politicians, the government itself. And so the risk here is that they might try to use uh, uh, those groups to uh, somehow uh, uh, break up the election if Lopez Obrador is way ahead or otherwise participate in some kind of fraud. But we can talk about that uh, next time. <laughs> and next time it is, John. Uh, we'll be having weekly reports from John Ackerman about the uh, Mexican elections. And please join us for our next interview with him. Thanks for joining us today, John. Thank you very much, Armin. A pleasure as always. And thank you for joining us here on The Real News Network.